Hello everybody, Adam at Flash Building, and this is the finished product of what you'll be learning how to design and animate using Swift 3D version 6. And I also discuss how to bring all these things into Flash, and a few of my previous tutorials show how to bring it into Flash, so you can render it on your web pages. And I'm not a big Internet Explorer fan or a big Windows fan at all. I just chose this logo because it's something a lot of people can identify with it's a logo that a lot of people have seen so I wanted to make something real familiar to you guys to choose to design and watching me go through the workflow will help you pick up some some little uh, techniques in Swift 3D okay the first thing we'll do is create the circular swoosh thing that goes around the big E and we'll click on create cylinder once that's down on the view pane we're gonna put the segmentation up to 64 axial and 64 radial and that will increase the polygon count inside of the mesh to give the mesh model more detail. Now I'm going to go to the length and start clicking down. You'll see it starts shrinking so it's not such a tall cylinder. I'm gonna put mine on I don't know point zero eight. And now with that one like that, I can just control C. I'm gonna highlight it, control C, control V. Now I have two cylinders, one right on top of the other. Let's put the length up on the the one on top. So you see that one has more length. Let's make it a different color so we can see the difference of what's going on there. Now I'm going to go to the top view on this one. Now once I'm in top view, I can position these disks right on top of each other because I'm going to use one as a punch out for the other. So this one, I'm going to move its... Uh, let me manipulate its radius first so you can see how it's fit inside of the other one now kind of and I'm gonna go to position and move its X coordinates to right about there and then once you see it's gonna cut out a piece of the edge and then taper the other two edges that's exactly what you want now there's a new feature in Swift 3D version 6 that the previous versions don't have where you can make a boolean out of objects so one object I'm gonna select this main disk we started with first the one that's a little wider around and I'm gonna create boolean with it selected I'm gonna go up here and click create boolean this is gonna allow me to cut or punch out or intersect two objects that I want so what I'm gonna do is with that selected still I create a boolean with it and you'll see a little uh, new dialog comes up in the properties window the boolean and we'll select second operand now you have to select second operand you click this button and you select the other operand that you want to work in that boolean with the first item this big black disk click down on that and you'll see it'll load in those two objects as a boolean and you can see even up here in the scene properties the objects both of those items are in that boolean now I'm gonna go to difference a B and you can select all of all four of these to see what it will do for you so what it did was it took the black uh, cylinder and it cut the shape right out of that uh, the tan cylinder there so with that we can take that and let's go to the scale properties of this object now and I think it's the X factor no it's not the X we gotta find the the one where it deals with the depth how thick it is I think it's the Y factor yep so let's just go down on the Y factor and make it nice and skinny and now we have our Internet Explorer swoosh thing that goes around now highlight it and you can tumble it now see what it looks like it's exactly what we wanted so that's the little swoosh that goes around the big E and it goes it's probably sitting at about that angle in the, on the actual logo but now let's get the E in there and finish it up now this part's super easy you just go up to the text tool and create text and now manipulate what the text uh, is rendering as and just make it render an E and I think an aerial is the uh, 
the E that they use in the Internet Explorer font. I don't know. I'm not sure, but it looks like the one to me, so I'm going to go with that. I'm going to go to Bevels. I'm going to go to Outer Rounded or Outer Round. And you see how it made it all puffy and big, and what I want is not so puffy to where it's not all puffed up on itself like that. So I'm going to go to Depth. Instead of 0 0.5 or 0 0.05, I'm going to go to 0 0.02. 0 0.02 and see what that gives me that's that's a little better I like that I'm gonna get the mesh quality all the way up and the smoothness all the way up now all I have to do is get it a little bit bigger let's go to scale and let's mess around with the properties of the scale let's make it a little bit taller and wider I think that's about it that's what I want and I'm going to tumble this just a little more right about there now I can put some uh, materials on it let's go to the materials tab here and on the swoosh we need uh, an orange I'm going to put glossy orange on the swoosh and the big E I think I'm going to go with reflective no I'll just go with glossy there's a whole bunch of different ways you can style it up. I'm going to go with this dark blue on all the edges, the bevel, the sides, and the top, and the back and front faces. Now, okay, now to get it animated all smooth and graceful, I'm going to click in this view pane anywhere off of those objects. I'm going to press Control A. I'm going to go to Arrange and Group so those two objects the letter E and the swoosh are grouped together now and I'm gonna go to position and I want to move the pivot only I wanna make sure this pivot you see that green spot that green dot or the pivot marker is directly in the center of the E so I'm gonna move no, not that way I wanna move this position here yeah put it right in the middle and then we're going to move it up a bit to put it in the middle on this paint so you see I targeted the middle here and I targeted the middle there on the top view to get it right in the center of that E now I'm going to in this view pane I'm going to select the item go to animations and I'm going to use just one of these regular horizontal spins let's go horizontal left that works any way you want to animate it. Just drag it onto it. Then I'm going to go to Animate. Click the Animating tool or the Animating icon there. That way you can manipulate the animation. You can see exactly what's going on there. The rotation is animated. I'm going to stretch that out to be more frames. Maybe about 40. So mine comes out really, really smooth. And with today's web, everybody on DSL and cable, uh, it's not too much, or most people on DSL and cable, it's not too much of a, uh, a burden to have a few extra frames in there. Now let's go to preview and export. Raster. Generate all frames. And there you go. The Internet Explorer logo, 3D, like you've never seen it before. And... Uh, these are true 3D model animations that you can then bring into Flash. You just export to file and make sure you're set as player SWF. It'll render out an SWF that you can then bring into Flash and what's really cool is that the background, that gray background you see, won't be there. It'll just be the model spinning around. So you can put effects on it and everything. And also have the the user's mouse interact with it if you want if you're good with setting up timeline timeline and action script a little bit you can have the user's mouse interact with it if needed but something like this can just be sitting there spinning and look friggin awesome that's butter man okie dokie we'll see you next lesson